Hey there, so I'm still working on this MOBA and yesterday I came across a problem that I needed to solve that I think almost every game dev needs to solve and I figured why not share it. So if your game has a user interface, then hang on because in this video I'm gonna show you how I do my user interface editing to make it extremely easy to use my UI across test levels like this and my real game like this without having to manage a bunch of prefabs and deal with overrides and other issues that I always run into when I try to do UIs as prefabs. And the solution is pretty simple. It's two simple pieces actually. The first is a separate scene for my in-game UI. So nowadays, instead of putting all of my UI elements into their own little prefabs and then dragging those prefabs out into the scene or anything like that, I create a completely separate scene. And I don't do this from the start. In fact, I just did this today. I took my scene that had my user interface in it, took all of the UI canvases, and I just have a separate canvas for each little piece of the UI. And then I drug those into a new scene named in-game UI. And I don't wanna have to load this manually every time I wanna work with it or when I load into a specific scene like my character test scene. So I also created a simple script and a simple prefab here that loads and unloads the UI. It's got a button on here to unload the UI from a current scene that I'm in. So if I wanna go in and like mess around and work with the UI, I can load that scene up, start playing around, do some changes. I, in fact, right now I'm adding a pools UI so I can see all of my pools and all of the stats for the characters and then I can go unload it when I'm done. If I press play this prefab will just load the object up so I can play and it'll or not load the object but it'll load the scene. It'll give us that in-game UI scene in just a second you'll see it appear here and then it just works as long as the UI scene elements are not tightly bound inside of the rest of your game and that's just done by making sure that your UI elements are looking for or other objects when they start up. So my panels all look for the characters or the local character. And then whenever that character changes, they refresh their data and rebind themselves. And the characters and other objects don't really know about the UI. If, as long as you keep your bindings that one way, then everything will work. And you can see I can run around here. I've got my characters I can switch between. I also have a hotkey here to just switch between all of my characters and another hotkey that doesn't seem to be working that's supposed to let me switch between how many different characters I want to have, but it doesn't seem to refresh my UI. So I can change it. Oh, you can see I can even uh, be a tower or a, a random spaceship or whatever different things. It's a lot of stuff here, but it makes it nice and easy. And by the way, this is just a test combat scene if you're curious what's going on here we've got a test ability scene that i showed a couple days ago um this one does something similar except you actually come in as a character and you battle other characters so that way you can test out the full combat system and test look for bugs look for new things to add and all of that even do balance testing with something simple like uh, okay which one will beat the other one just going head to head you can see that that particle is a little bit wrong too anyway that's what i wanted to show today this in-game UI loader. Let's take a look at the code actually before I wrap this up. Here's the code for it. It's again pretty simple. There are a couple things that might be confusing though. If you're not familiar with the if defines, this is just going to make sure that the scene management inside Unity editor part only is loaded for the editor. That way if we do a build, it will still work. And if you copy this code, it's still gonna work. It is using the Serenix Odin Inspector button attribute here. If you don't have Odin Inspector, you can just remove that and add a context menu attribute or something and just go, context menu and then yeah give it a name like a whatever load ui and you'd be able to right click on it and show it that way as well now let's take a look at what the load ui button does or the load ui method it just looks to see if we have the in-game ui scene loaded if we do we return and then if we're playing so we're running then we actually just use the scene manager's load scene async and load the level additively otherwise if we're in the editor so we do this check here this if check is a compile time check so if we're not doing an editor thing we've done a build the rest of the this method won't exist and that will exit out. But if we're in the editor, then what we'll do is call this open scene. In fact, we don't really need this else here, but I have it. Oh, well, we kind of do need the else here. That's a, that was a lie because if we're playing, we don't want the open scene to get called even if we're in the editor. So we want the else check as well. And then in the unload, obviously just checks to see if we have it loaded and then unloads either with scene manager or editor scene manager using the closed scene. Anyway, if this was helpful, nice little video, um, let me know 
drop a comment down below, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and all that stuff. If you want to see the code for the full game, it's up as part of the multiplayer mastery course. I've got the code as I'm going along, just getting uploaded into there. And we've been discussing it a bit in our weekly or bi-weekly calls every Monday and Thursday. So we talked about it a little bit earlier today, and I'm sure we'll be diving into more stuff on it on uh, Thursday as well. And those are going on um, for the foreseeable future. Anyway, thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that. And if you have a different way for doing UIs, let me know that in the comments too. Kind of curious what everybody else is doing. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, if you want the code for this UI part specifically, I'll put a link in the description or you can go to game.courses slash in-game UI. I'll put it up there as well.